After the iPhone has been powered down, you'll need to remove the bottom two Penelope screws that are located near the charge port. These screws anchor the bottom of the display to the phone. After those screws are removed, you can begin to slide an opening tool in between the plastic frame and the metal back housing. You'll then have to pry and twist slightly to unseat the screen, though you may have to do the same thing on the other side to unseat it completely. Before proceeding any further, the battery must be unplugged. Removing the two Phillips screws will allow you to remove the shield that covers the clips for the battery and charge port. Once the shield is off, simply unclip the battery. To remove the display, you'll have to remove the five total Phillips screws that hold the shield on top of the clips for the display. These screws, if put back into the wrong spot, can cause damage to the logic board. For this reason, organizing your screws is strongly suggested. After the shield is taken off, you'll need to unclip the following flex cables. The home button flex, the flex for the front camera assembly, the flex for the LCD, and the flex for the digitizer. The screen should now be free from the phone. To begin removing the logic board, you can start by removing the Phillips screw that's located directly underneath the SIM card tray and remove the tray as well. To completely detach the bottom of the board from the phone, unclip the charge port flex and the clip for the cellular antenna. Moving to the top of the phone, the clip for the back camera can be unsat, and the two Phillips screws and the bracket that hold the camera in can be removed at this time as well. The screw on the left side of the bracket will be located under a small amount of tape, so you may want to peel this back before attempting to remove the screw, though you can usually just go right through it. Then, just to be safe, the camera itself can be removed. There will be one more Phillips screw that secures a ground for the camera to the board that will need to be removed along with the ground itself. Next, there's a Phillips screw that helps anchor the top of the board to the housing that will need to be removed. On the top left side of the phone, there are two Phillips screws and a shield that cover two clips. The clip on the right side is the clip for the power button and or camera flash assembly, and the clip on the left is for the volume buttons. Both clips will need to be removed. The GPS module will then need to be removed before the board can be taken out. Removing the two screws that connect the module to the housing as well as the three that secure it to the board should allow you to be able to lift it out. There will then be two more Phillips screws located underneath the module that will need to be removed as well. The screw that I took out on the right side also holds in a bracket that you'll need to save too. The last screw holding the board in is a standoff located to the left of the connectors for the display assembly, which can be taken out with a flathead screwdriver. The logic board can then be lifted up carefully by grabbing it at the bottom and pulling downward slightly, and then finally pulling it out completely. When ready, the new logic board can be put in the housing by carefully moving the flex cables out of the way and sliding it in topside down first. You'll want to make sure that the board slides underneath the black L-shaped bracket to be sat in properly. The first screw you can replace will be the standoff that we just took out.
Then, to make sure that the board is secure enough, replace the Phillips screw near the SIM card tray, as well as the tray itself. Now the charge port and cellular antenna can be clipped back in. Then the two clips for the power and the volume buttons can be clipped back in and that metal connector at the top can be replaced along with the two Phillips screws to secure it in. The screw that goes directly to the left of the bottom screw for the connector can be replaced as well before laying the GPS module back in. Then the remaining five Phillips screws for this module can be replaced. Once all of those screws are replaced, the plate that covers the volume and power clips can be laid back in and the two screws that secure it in can be replaced as well. Before laying the camera back in, the ground for it will have to be placed back in and the lowermost screw for it will need to be replaced. Once the screw for the ground is secured, the camera can be laid back in place, clipped in, and the bracket that holds it can be placed on top as well. After the bracket is sitting snug, the two Phillips screws to hold it in can be put back in, along with that Phillips screw that anchors the top of the logic board to that L-shaped bracket. When reattaching the display, the cables will clip in in the following order. The clip for the digitizer, the clip for the LCD, the clip for the home button, and the clip for the front camera assembly. Once the clips are put back in in the correct order, the shield and its corresponding screws can be replaced.
Next, the battery can be clipped back in, and the plate and two Phillips screws that secure it in can be replaced as well. When ready to close the phone back up, you should be able to notice little plastic hooks on the top of the display frame. These will have to be embedded into the back housing before the rest of the screen can be sat in. When the display is sitting flat on the phone, the two pentalobe screws can be replaced, completing the repair.